Here's a little video showing you how to get the heater control switch for the Generation 1 Nissan LEAF installed into your Generation 1 Nissan LEAF. You're going to need a few basic tools and patience. That's all, really. Um, so, the basic tools you need are some form of pokey devices, not even screwdrivers, just something to help you get electrical connectors removed, and drills. The key one is a 20, 20 millimeter diameter. I actually used a 19 and that was good enough. And it's also good to have some pilots so that you can start the hole where you want it and be sure it's going where you want it. If you try and start drilling a hole with that, you're gonna make a mess of it. But if you're happy using a drill, you probably already know that. And if you're not happy using a drill, then maybe get someone to help you with that step. So, something you need to know if you've not worked on cars before, or the electrical parts of cars, is it's very simple. Almost all connectors are made so that they can only go where they belong. They've got the particular shape and they'll have these little ridges to stop you from putting the wrong one in the wrong place. When you're disconnecting them, you have to find this little button here to release them. There's a tiny little catch there, and if, if you just try and pull the connector out, it won't come. So you've got to push that down and get the catch out. If it doesn't want to come and you think you're pulling that button down, don't force it in any, any work on a car. Don't force it unless you're certain that, that is the right thing to do. So quite often you'll find that your thumb is a bit too fat to push that down properly, which is what you have your pokey devices for. Just get them on and you can definitely push that and not be pushing all of it. So with those basic, um, basic guidelines set out, let's go about showing you how to put this thing in. Play along with me. So you need to get this black trim off the center of your dashboard. And all you do, get your fingers behind it, maybe brace with your thumbs against the dash, and push. Same for the top, give the top a push. Now there's a little trick to actually getting this off, which is that it needs to come up first, and then down. If you can see here, first of all, you've got to lift it up so that it unhooks off here, then bring it down so that it unhooks out of there. Once you've got it here, Use what I've just told you about disconnecting electrical connectors. So find the ones that are on here, press their little buttons. So there's this one at the side that goes into the stereo. There's this one at the top, which connects to the hazard warning light switch. And I might even need to resort to my poker for this one. There we go, beautiful. And then finally, the one we're really interested in is the heater control down here. Push that. This guy is now free. Put it somewhere safe, such as the back seat, while we continue. So, that is the cable that goes into the heater controller. Let me bring my prop back. So, heater controls, uh, socket, plug, ta-da. This is the magic device that's got the switch that enables you to turn the heater on and off yourself. This just goes in between those two. So one end goes in there where the dash controls would have gone. Remember to line up ridges with blockers. So that goes in there. This one goes in here and you've got your connection back to the car with this. Now I haven't connected it properly because we've got to do one more thing which is to find somewhere for the switch to live so that it fits nicely and you can operate it. Now the place that seems the most natural for it to go is here. So you just end up with the switch down by your little 12 volt outlet, your cigarette lighter. Now you need to drill a hole in there. So taking your drills it's pretty awkward because this gets in the way. So you use your first one, your biggest drill, and work out where you want the center of the hole to be. 
so that it's not hitting that and it's just in this flat bit nicely. I would show you, but if I move that camera, I won't get it set up again because that's very precisely wedged. Um, but when you look in here, you'll see that it's pretty damn simple. So you mark where you want your center. So you can just push the drill down quite hard to make a little mark. Maybe use your poking device to make sure it's there or even use a marker pen if you're feeling flash. Then, as I say already, if you know how to drill, you probably don't need to hear this. You might even think that I'm not doing it the right way. Um, drill your pilot hole, a bigger hole, and the biggest hole, the correct size hole in fact. Once you've done that, or as you're doing that, be careful of this 12 volt connector here. It's got a little flippy cover on it. When I did it the first time, I caught that with my drill, which is not a disaster, but it's, you know, a fail on in terms of doing the job well. So be very careful as you're drilling through not to let the drill go too far. Um, I will not be held responsible for any large explosions, damage or general um, gnashing of teeth that is caused by incorrect operation of drills. As I've already said, get someone who knows what they're doing with a drill to do this bit. Anyhow, once that person has done it, you then want to put this in there. But you want to put this in from underneath and yeah, you won't do it. So you've got to disconnect these. Pay attention to where they were wired. So button one is over by the blue wire. Get a hold of the connector. Do not pull the cable. So get the connector and pull the connector off. Give it a wiggle and a pull. Blue. Brown. Red. Put those cables through there. Now then, did we remember the right way of connecting them? It was, one was to blue, and again, push the connector, not the cable. Blue, brown, red. Beautiful, they're all home pretty well. Make sure they make a good connection. Then don't pull the cables again, just, just put a little bit of tension on the cables to make sure they don't snag and bunch up. Pop that up there. There you go, that's the, the switch mounted really neatly. Next, tuck the cables away. I've actually taped mine up with a little bit of insulation tape. So tuck them away. Find the front of your dashboard, connect into here, make sure it clicks nicely, find your connector from the car, connect that, again make sure it makes a nice click, bring this back up tidily, get the cable in neatly, and then remember that we disconnected two other things. Your car with different options may have more than two. It probably won't have less because I think this is a basic version of the leaf. So line the connector up correctly, push it until it clicks. There you go. Again with that one, push it until it clicks. Bring it back in. All the while just check the cabling is tidy. Get the various plastic locating legs in the right place. Get it lined up. Pop it back in. There you go. Job done. All right, I hope that wasn't too long-winded and I hope that clears up any questions you may have about how to fit this. If anything you've seen there makes you feel a bit uneasy, then speak to a car stereo installer. They, they do this type of thing day in, day out. It's their bread and butter. It shouldn't take them, well, shouldn't even take them 20 minutes, but anyway. Don't be afraid of talking to someone like that. If you want to do it yourself, again, don't be afraid either. Common sense, don't force anything. And if all goes wrong, don't blame me. <laughs> You'll be fine.